to part two of the Nissan Silvia S15 EMU Black Build. Today in this episode I'm going to be putting together the patch harness, I'm going to be showing you how the patch harness actually connects into the Delphi connectors and we're also going to be doing a little bit of soldering on the patch harness board itself depending on which car you have depends on how much soldering you'll have to do. So without further ado let's get straight into it. So what you're going to need to put together the plug and play patch harness is a soldering iron, the plug and play adapter itself and connectors, the pin out for the plug and play adapter, the flying leads for the plug and play adapter, the emu black itself, the emu black pin out card, an assortment of screwdrivers, clips and pliers. Make sure that your screwdrivers include a Torx T10 piece, otherwise you won't be able to get into the plug and play adapter itself. You're going to need your multimeter to be able to test the connectivity once we're done. And you're also going to need a cup of coffee. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be matching up the plug and play adapter with the connectors on the EMU Black. One thing to note is that if you are using a plug and play harness on an EMU Black, the two black connectors are actually different sizes and that's because the EMU Black has more inputs and outputs than the EMU Classic that these plug and play adapters are designed for. Putting together this plug and play harness is quite straightforward. I've already done my grey harness just because I wanted to make sure that everything was as expected. None of the pins were broken and they were all the correct size. But I'll talk you through how we actually put together this harness going forward. So on these connectors we have a yellow pin guard and then if we turn the connector over you'll see that we've got some weather pack seals and an alignment slide. You can leave this side in, you don't need to take it out. If you do find it easier with it out, you'll notice that there are two openings on this side. If you want to take the alignment slide out, you will need to get a small flathead screwdriver and just poke it in there and it just pops straight out like that. This is the weatherproof seal behind and again, if you want to get that out, all you need to do is just take your screwdriver just get behind it very gently and pull it out. This will then leave you with your openings if you find it easier to work with without these seals in place. I'm going to be putting together the harness with the slide and the seal in place as it makes it easier to understand the size of the pins that are acceptable. As you can see on the outside there are some bigger pin slots than on the inside and that's because these use different size pins on the flying leads. First thing you're going to need to do is Take your flathead screwdriver again and you will just see that there is a little black guide or grey if you're using the grey connector and we're just going to take the screwdriver and just very gently work that yellow connector out. Once you pop one side out you just need to do the other side. It can be quite fiddly but again just be patient and you will be able to get this connector out. If you are finding it difficult you may want to try using a smaller flathead screwdriver once you have the yellow guard out, just place that to one side. Here's one of my grey connectors that I finished earlier. And as you can see, look, the lever itself locks the pin in place. You can see the lever's much more clearer on this connector. If for whatever reason you do need to release a pin, you simply take your screwdriver, slide it under the pin connector lock, and then pull the pin out from behind. And that slides out just like so. When we want to insert a pin, we're simply going to take the pin on the back side of the connector with the corresponding hole and just slide it in like so. You should hear quite a satisfying click if the pin is in the correct position. I really like working with these Delphi connectors. As you can see, they're really easy to operate, they're really easy to put the pins in and out, and they're really easy to seal correctly. With the plug and play harness, there's no difficult crimping either. However, I will be going into some more detail on crimping in a later video. 
So for the black connector, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take the pinout card for your emu black. And as you can see, each pin is detailed. This image here relates to the emu black itself and not the connector front. If we take our emu black, this pin here is pin number one. And this pin here is pin 39. Again, as I mentioned before, the emu black connector is larger and so you are going to need to assign your inputs and outputs from the emu black onto the plug and play harness adapter. Some of the inputs and outputs on the emu black you may not be using and that's fine, you can leave them blank. Some of the inputs and outputs on the emu black, such as the wideband connector, may not need to go through the plug and play harness. And again, leave them blank for now and we'll go into more detail in another video about how to wire those into our emu black adapter once we are finished. With regards to the colours on the flying leads, there is no assigned colour. It doesn't really matter what colours you use, but if you want to choose a colour then that's fine too. With my harness, I've tried to follow the colours that were on the card itself, but it doesn't really matter. And as you can see, some of the leads are thicker than the others, and these may not necessarily match up with the colours that are on the card. So let's get right into it. So we're going to start with black 17. That's the first pin on the plug and play harness handout. If we take our plug and play harness, we can see that this is pin number one. This is pin number eight, and we need pin number 17. So we're gonna count along. And this gives us pin number 17, which is here. We then need to do the same on our emu black, and ECU ground is pin number 28. This one's a little bit easier because the actual card itself tells us where the pins are. So pin number 27 is here, so this is pin number 28. We take our connector and with the purple interlock on the outside, we count the pins. That's pin number 27 and that's pin number 28. Okay, so I'm gonna take the connectors and I'm gonna do the same for the rest of the harness. Once we've got all the pins in place, we're gonna to wanna to take our yellow pin guide. As you can see, the pin guide actually has A, B, C, and then the numbers one to eight along the pins. This will line up with your actual pins on the connector itself. Once in place, simply let the first connector click in and let the second connector click in and you're done. Once complete, you should have something that looks like this. Okay, so once we've built our harness, what we're going to want to do is we're going to take our plug and play adapter here. On the adapter are four Torx T10 screws, and we're just going to take these screws out. There's four in total, and you just want to make sure that you seat the Torx bit into the screw nicely so that you don't strip them. Once we've taken our four screws out, we'll see that the backing plate is actually in two halves here. Take off the two halves take off the top and we're going to take off the bottom like so. This will actually reveal our PCB and as you can see at the top here these are the jumpers that we're going to be soldering right here. Once we're ready to solder we're going to dab a little bit of solder on the actual tip. We're going to take our soldering iron and we're going to line it up with the two joints. What we're wanting to do is heat up the joints and then we're going to push the solder into the joint itself. Okay, so I'm just going to do this for all of the jumpers where there is a number 15 on. Once done, you should have something that looks like this. I'm just going to raise some attention to this solder joint right here. As you can see, it is less than ideal. And if I'm honest, I'm not really too happy about the finish. However, it was really difficult as the solder just wanted to jump onto the pin. If you do end up with a solder joint like this, don't panic. What you want to do is take a multimeter, set it to continuity mode, and just test the surrounding pins and make sure there's no continuity around the pins that there shouldn't be. As you can see, there is continuity on the joint itself, so I'm quite happy about that. Okay, and then once we're done, we're just going to simply put the case back together again. Once we've got the case 
paste back together again. What you're going to want to do is take your two harnesses and connect them in. Once they're connected in, take the reference sheet that comes with your plug and play adapter and this will give you the pin out of your OEM ECU. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that pin out and we're gonna make sure that everything lines up as expected with a multimeter. So what I've done is I've taken the red connector on my multimeter and I've put that into the ECU ground pin on the black EMU black connector. And I'm gonna use my pin reference chart to see which pins are the ECU ground pins on my OEM connector. On the sheet, it's saying that pins 39 and 48 are my grounds, and that's these two pins here. That's that one and that one. So we're just gonna do a test now. And as we can hear, there is continuity there. I'm now gonna do this for all of the pins. I won't bore you and make you watch it all, so I'll speed this section up. Okay guys, so after spending about an hour of continuity checking, checking documents online and things like that, I finally got a corrected version of this document. We can see here we've got injector number five is actually the idle air valve and I've confirmed that with an ECU master representative who said that's a, a documentation issue there. If we go on to the other side, we can see injector six is actually for the boost solenoid. Everything else is fine. And then you get up to G5, which has nothing at all attached and then you get up to g12 which actually aligns up with 105 which is the vtc solenoid and then something that's quite concerning here is that b7 and b15 are the wrong way around they actually line up fine with regards to the io on the emu black but it's meant to be pin 31 for the primary trigger and pin 30 for the 180 degree one what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of this onto a spreadsheet and I'll host it on my Google Drive. I'll put a link below in the description. So if you're trying to do this on an S15 yourself, you can see what I've done and try and correspond it to your own build. Okay guys, that's the end of today's video. I hope you found all of this information useful. If you did, drop us a like. If you didn't, drop us a comment below and give me some feedback. I'm always open to some feedback. I'm really, really excited to get this harness in the car. I can't wait to start working on the Emu Black. In my next video, I'm going to be installing some sensors on the S15 itself. We're going to be running some wire all the way from the engine bay to the ECU in the footwell. And we're also going to be adding a few different circuits here and there based on the OEM harness. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Cheers. Oh.